The Cyclone football team won their third straight game, defeating the Texas Tech Red Raiders in Lubbock. The one-two punch of Brock Purdy and Brees Hall combined for 561 yards of total offense. Iowa State 34, Texas Tech 24. The Iowa State volleyball team went 1-1 one one this week, sweeping the TCU Horned Frogs before falling to the Sooners 3-1 on Saturday. We'll have all the analysis for you. Cyclone Insiders starts now. Welcome to Cyclone Insiders and happy homecoming week. I'm Ben Olson, joined at the desk with my usual insiders, Jared and John. And guys, another great week for the Iowa State football team. Yes, sir. Traveled sure. down to Lubbock, Texas to face the Texas Tech Red Raiders where they picked up a 34 to 24 win. It started out really strong, leading 20 to seven at halftime. Kind of got a little shaky there in the second half, guys, but they were able to pull it out for the win. Brock, Party, Brock Purdy for the Cyclones, 23 for 32, 378 yards and three touchdowns. One interception, but he almost had 300 yards before halftime. And then again, Brees Hall, 19 attempts for 183 yards, two touchdowns, and that huge run in the second half, guys. Uh, did you guys think that Iowa State was going to hang on to win this one with that little shaky second half? Uh, what are your overall thoughts, Jared? I did think they were going to hold on to it. Uh, that you know, going off 20-0 to zero right away off the bat uh, gave them a nice cushion. And, and um, when you get out to that good of a start, it's always, you know, a question of uh, when, when halftime comes, are you going to keep that up? Uh, they stumbled just a little bit. Uh, and they let Texas Tech back in the game, but kept them at arm's length enough. Uh, and the defense stood up when it needed to and, and was able to pull it out. So Yeah, we saw stuff. a lot of execution out of the team. What do you think, John? Yeah, so kind of, you know, finishing off the first half, we didn't really capitalize maybe as we should have. You know, it could have been 27 at half or even 30. But, um, you know, starting the second half, Texas Tech got that field goal, and then we were kind of stagnant. Then, you know, Hall broke that long run, so I, I was kind of like, oh, you know, it's in the bag at this point. But then um, that interception and, like, reverse fumble, weird stuff that happened, you know, brought the worries back. But I did think that I would say it was going to hold on, but it was really a closer game than it probably should have been, in my opinion. So, Yeah, I agree. I mean, you look at the stat lines that Iowa State had, and you'd think maybe they would have blown, blown mm -hmm. this game out. Um, but the reason I bring this up is because I wanted to talk about is if you look at Iowa State teams in the past with uh, the turnover and then the three missed kicks, the two field goals by Narvison, and then mm -hmm. Ass Alley missed that extra point. You look at those things, that's a thing that would have killed momentum for Iowa State teams of the past, and they would have let a game like this slip away. So uh, that just shows the culture change that Coach Campbell has brought to Iowa State. I so, say, yeah, Iowa State is no longer a team that, that gets you know, caught up by those mistakes. Mm -hmm. That no longer ruins the rest of the game for them. Uh, they're able to come back strong. Campbell, I feel like, has definitely changed the culture of this team that even though something doesn't quite go the way of the team, uh, they're able to calm down and respond, uh, which is something that I think the football team have been lacking in years past. Right, and it's great to see that, uh, especially as we head into the second half and later parts of the mm -hmm. season. Uh, so Iowa State put up 34 points, guys, and we all feel like it could have been more. Mm -hmm. Who on the offense was most impressive for you in this game? Because there was a lot of performances to go around that were notable. John? I'm going to go with Charlie Kohler, tight end. Um, you know, three catches, 79 yards, two touchdowns, all of which were in the first half. Um, that was very impressive for me. I, I mean, considering that when you think of the Cyclones receiving game, he doesn't always come to mind right away. It's usually Jones, Milton, Pettowit. So, you know, that was really nice to see him kind of have, I wouldn't say a breakout game, but definitely, you know, a solid overall performance that, you know, hopefully can continue going forward. Yeah, I agree. I think Charlie Kohler uh, has just continued to get better mm -hmm. over the span of these conference games. Jared, who'd you have? I have LaMichael Petway once again, uh, coming in with the, uh, the timely catches. Those two early catches that he had on, on, first, uh, on third downs to get the first down on uh, those first early couple drives helped keep the, uh, keep the drive going, uh, and they were able to capitalize on some of those 
opportunities, and he helped helped get off to that early lead. Uh, and coming in with the, the touchdown on the slant there, uh, with the strong hands, he's got reliable hands that he can hold onto the ball. Uh, so another good week for the Michael Petwood. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I like that none of us actually picked the obvious choices, which would have been like Brock Purdy and Brees Hall. But that's a good sign, guys, because mm -hmm. they're just kind of getting that consistent level where mm -hmm. their big stat lines aren't that surprising to us. For me, the point that I wanted to make was I think this was the best game that the Iowa State offensive line has played this year. Um, and they created a lot of holes for Brees Hall, which we know he can create his own space. But uh, the way they protected Purdy was really big, too. I think all around as a unit, they were just really strong in this game, especially playing on the road. And uh, if they can continue that as we start to face some tougher Big 12 competition, that's going to be really big for Iowa State moving forward. Um, on the defensive end, guys, uh, it was a back and forth game. Of course, the Tech offense just moves so fast. One of the fastest offenses in the Big 12. Easy mm -hmm. to tire down your defense. Uh, Jared, who did you have as most impressive player on Iowa State's team? I have Lawrence White this week. Uh, season high tackles of seven uh, in the game. And he's quite, kind of quietly having a good, good season in the shadows of kind of some other defensive players. Uh, he just kind of seems to be in on several plays and really helping the secondary out. I agree. I, we saw Lawrence White make that tackle in the intro video there. He seemed mm -hmm. like he was all over the field. What about you, John? I'm going to go with linebacker Marcel Spears. Uh, he kind of showed why he's the anchor of our defense. You know, 11 tackles. Um, kind of pointed out secondary played well. Uh, limiting that Texas Tech air raid offense, fast pace. But, you know, they threw the ball 52 times and completed 40 of them. So I think, you know, that shows credit to our linebackers for coming up and making those tackles and not letting them, you know, get that run after catch that, you know, they may have, could have if we didn't have Spears and company. So, Marcel Spears, this is the first game of his career that he didn't have a pick six against Texas <laughs> Tech. Does that make it a failure? Just kidding, guys. He's, he's really establishing himself as the leader of this team, it seems like. Uh, I was going to go with another corner, uh, Kyle, for the Iowa State secondary, a young guy that stepped up, redshirt freshman. Um, and there was a lot of young corners playing in this game. It seems like this is the first year that Iowa State doesn't really have that Brian Peavy or Leonard Johnson or anybody like that at corner. Mm -hmm. So uh, against that potent Texas Tech air raid, it uh, was nice to see some of these young corners step up and have pretty big games. So let's move on to next week. We've got the homecoming game this Saturday. Iowa State's playing Oklahoma State. The Cowboys have dropped two straight games. Uh, guys, what are your keys to this game for Iowa State? Uh, first of all, first and foremost, you've got to stop Hubbard. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's been a beast all year. He's averaging six and a half yards per carry. Uh, he's even broken some off for over 200 yards in a game and even close to 300. Uh, so my first key would be, would be contain him as much as possible. He's going to get his yards, but you just can't let him get too many. Uh, and then I would also say create turnovers. Sanders has thrown nine picks this year. The last couple games, you know, they've been fumbling. So if Iowa State could create a turnover too and then score off of that, those are, those are big, big keys to the game. Yeah, Hubbard's going to be a good test for this Iowa State defensive line. Uh, Pro Football Focus actually has him rated as sixth in the Heisman race right now above Brock Purdy. They actually listed him at 10th, which was awesome, I must say. Yeah. Uh, John, what do you have for keys to the game? So, yeah, kind of going off what Jared said, I think we need to make Oklahoma State air it out and not early as well. Um, Hubbard, you know, we need to just, I don't know if we're going to stop him, but we definitely need to slow him down. Iowa State does have the second best rush defense statistically in the Big 12, so hopefully we can continue that this week. But, um, yeah, Hubbard, he's you know, 1,200 plus yards, 15 touchdowns, both of which are leading the NCAA actually. So um, he's certainly, you know, a tough task to handle, but at the same time, you know, if we can limit him to 100 to 150 yards and one touchdown, um, you know, should be just fine, so. Yeah, no, definitely a big game for the defense coming up. Uh, for me, I'm gonna say the key to this game is just for Iowa State to remain uh, within themselves, you know, and kind of keep their focus because it's homecoming. Obviously, every team who comes in wants to ruin your homecoming. And the Cowboys have lost two straight, so they're hungry. They're looking for that win. I think they're pretty disappointed in their Big 12 start. Um, so I guess I don't want to see a slow start out of Iowa State get down early to this Oklahoma State team. Yeah. Uh, if they just stay level-headed most of the game, um, that'll be another culture change like we talked about, something that maybe this seems like a trap game for Iowa State. So if they can come out 
and uh, I mean, not get knocked down by Oklahoma State, that'll be really big for me. I think another big thing to point out for me, at least, would have been would be that uh, we just need to limit the big plays, especially with Hubbard, and then um, kind of you know play our brand of football and not necessarily you know let those big plays get to our heads. So. Yeah, I like that. Play our game and not uh, sink down to that yep. Oklahoma State style. And then in, uh, in in trying to stop Hubbard, you can't forget about Sanders uh, and his legs uh, oh, yeah. out of the backfield. Iowa State has been burned a couple times this season. Uh, with some scrambles on some broken plays, and Sanders is, of course, very capable of that. So that'd be another another thing to watch. Absolutely. Big game in the Big 12 coming up for Iowa State versus Oklahoma State. Uh, but some other notable football news today was that the 2020 football schedule was completed and announced. Uh, the Big 12 released their uh, scheduling for the conference season in 2020. Mm -hmm. We've got that. We can show it to you here. Um, what did you guys think of this schedule for Iowa State? It's a little intriguing for me. Uh, we're obviously starting that home and home against UNLV. Uh, they're coming to town here next next year, and then the year after, Iowa State goes there. Um, and then we saw another edition of a Thursday game, yeah. which we haven't oh, seen yeah. for the past couple seasons. Iowa State will play uh, Kansas State on Thursday, October 29th. Uh, so that was interesting to see another one of those games added to the schedule. Yeah, first Thursday game for Iowa State in a few years. Um, I also noticed that that's K-State, uh, so there will be no homecoming Halloween game next year for Iowa State. They'll play Oklahoma for homecoming the week before. And also, Kansas State and West Virginia were switched around in rivalry week, mm -hmm. so we get the Riot Bowl during uh, rivalry week, Iowa State versus West Virginia. But I like the schedule for Iowa State, you guys. The non-conference is uh, not too difficult. Uh, the Iowa game at Iowa seems to be the only thing that's been plaguing us. And I know that those guys will be hungry, especially Coach Campbell, for that win against Iowa. But I really like Iowa State's chances in that Big 12 conference. Do you guys see one game that's going to be crucial? Um, I actually I think something that I thought was the first thing I saw when I looked at the schedule was that we got Oklahoma in October. So instead of them, you know, lately it's kind of seemed like we play them at the end of the year when it's the conference standings are already decided. But now it's kind of like Oklahoma, you know, we're going to get to see us within the first couple of conference games if we're legit or not. So, you know, that's going to be really interesting to see next year. But, um, yeah, I think just seeing if Iowa State's going to be at that top tier right away compared to, you know, later in the year will be interesting. Yeah, a lot seems like it might be set up for a Big 12 championship mm -hmm. run. We know that's the team's goal, especially mm -hmm. next season. I'm definitely excited about it. We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll uh, jump into our Pick'em segment where we've got a great set of games coming up this week. And we'll also have a little volleyball analysis for you. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Cyclone Insiders. Welcome back to Cyclone Insiders. We touched on that Iowa State versus Oklahoma State game earlier. And now let's get into the actual score predictions with the Cyclone Insiders Pick'em segment. All right, guys, we have a great slate of games coming up this week. Um, so last week, I had an absolutely terrible week. Went one and four. The only game I got right was the Iowa State game, which, as the insider's host, I feel like is my duty. But uh, John had a decent bounce back week going three and two. Jared went two and three. You can see the overall standings for the season. How are you guys feeling? I mean, Ben's at the bottom, so I'm good, I guess. But um, yeah, I mean, bounce back week three and two after my week off, so you know. I'm feeling pretty good. Continue that winning streak coming into this week. Take over as the top dog. So, Jared, you nervous? Uh, <laughs> no, not feeling great. But not, you know, it's not too bad. It could be worse. It could be worse. I could argue that we're all tied with six wins. It just took me a little longer to get there. <laughs> all right, guys. This Iowa State versus o or Iowa State versus Oklahoma State game. Iowa State is favored by ten and a half at home in this one. Like I said, Oklahoma State has dropped two in a row. John, since you were leader last week, why don't you start? Who do you have in this one? Roll clones, baby. Um, I just see our, you know, our offense with Brees Hall and uh, Purdy with his uh, what sixth three hundred yard game of the year, which is a school mm -hmm. record. Right. Um, so yeah, I just think our offense is going to be too much for them to handle. And although uh, we pointed out, like Hubbard, you know, one of the best players in college football, <clears throat> I think our defense is just going to, you know, limit him a little bit. And I expect us to win a high scoring battle. I would love to see a lot of offense on the homecoming game. Mm -hmm. Jared, what are you thinking in this game? Well, I say the past couple weeks, Iowa State has proved me wrong on these double digit yeah. these double digit spreads. So I'm gonna learn my lesson, go with the hot hand, I'll take Iowa State in this game. 
I like it. I like the pick. Uh, for me, I'm also going to go with Iowa State in this one. Um, I think as long as they can remain within themselves, like I said, and uh, I think they're a much better team than Oklahoma State is overall. Mm -hmm. So if they uh, keep that offense rolling against Big 12 defenses like they have, then uh, I think Iowa State will be able to cover the 10 and a half. Mm -hmm. Let's move over to the next game. Jared, I'm going to have you go first. We've got Oklahoma favored by 23 and a half at Kansas State. Kansas State just pulled off that win against TCU last week, which uh, killed me. But <laughs> so Oklahoma at Kansas State, Jared, what are you thinking? I say Oklahoma is just still looking unstoppable with another big, big win against West Virginia. Uh, Kansas State did not look, I mean, even though they pulled out the game last week, they didn't look you know, great. So I got Oklahoma in this one, another big win. John, how about you? What are you thinking? This one was actually, I was leaning towards Oklahoma for, you know, when I first saw it, but now I've kind of thought that, you know, 23 and a half is a lot to give to a Kansas State team that, you know, they just seem to battle week in and week out. And 23, you know, that's three scores, even four if it's a field goal. So, um, you know, I just think Kansas State's going to end up being closer than 23. So I'm going to go with them. Taking K-State. You stole my pick, John. I was going to try and get a game up on you guys. <laughs> Actually, I think for you changing that up, I'm actually going to go with Oklahoma <laughs> minus 23 and a half here at Kansas State. Um, I think Jalen Hurts might have a field day with this young yeah. Kansas State team. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had a tough time picking Oklahoma with these giant spreads, but for the sake of standings, I'm going to go for it. Now we're jumping down to Texas, who just had that pitiful game against Kansas. Really looked like they were going to lose yeah. the last second field goal to win it. Mm -hmm. So Texas is favored by one point as they travel to play the TCU Horned Frogs. I'll start in this one. I think as much as it kills me, I'm still going to go with Texas. This is a game they should win. I want them to win because I want uh, that ranked matchup when they come to town to play the Cyclones later in, the, in November. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to go Texas is going to win by more than one at TCU. Yeah, I actually agree with you, Ben, for once. Uh, Texas is going to you know, win by more than one. I think they are the spread creators are a little uh, too high on Kansas right now. So, um, yeah, I think Texas is going to win by more than one point. So. It's fair, yeah, I got, I got Texas as well. Stumbled a little bit last week. Um, you know, that, that happens sometimes not too concerning. Uh, I think Texas goes in and, and covers that one. So like you said, you were thinking the spread creators were a little high on Kansas, uh, giving them a little too much respect after that Texas mm -hmm. game. So now we've got Texas Tech is traveling to Lawrence. They're going to play the Jayhawks. Texas Tech is favored by three and a half. John, why don't you start? Yeah, I'm going to, like I said, I think they're riding Kansas a little too highly. So um, I'm going to go with Texas Tech. You know, Iowa State showed that they can slow down their offense, but uh, I don't think Kansas can. Uh, as Texas, what, put up, what was the score, 51-48 last week? 50-48, yeah. 50-48, yeah. So um, I think they're going to give up well over 35, 42 points, so it's going to be hard for them to score that much in Texas Tech. So, Jared, do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with, with the Texas Tech pick there. Uh, Kansas did play very impressive last weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're on their way to becoming a better program. I just think they're not there yet to put – a bunch of games together in a row. So I'll take Texas Tech. All right, I'm going to use this as my opportunity to jump <laughs> up a game on you guys. I'm going to go with Kansas uh, to upset Texas Tech here in this game. I think they played great against Texas, which they seem to have Texas's number the last few years and putting up a good fight against them. But I also think that this Texas Tech game, if you think about that loss to Baylor and then this loss to Iowa State, two tough losses, really a hard-fought game by Tech. I think they might be a little depleted. They have to go on the road now after losing two home games. I think Kansas is going to sneak this one out. Hopefully I can jump up a spot in the standings. I mean, fellas. you're coming back or falling, for, falling further behind. So <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing to lose. That's right? right. All right, let's jump into some Iowa State volleyball. Had two games this last week. They swept TCU to end that three-game uh, homestand they had in Hilton. Candelaria Herrera had 10 kills. Izzy Enna had three aces as well as 12 digs. Some great back row play for her, her, out of her for the Cyclones. And uh, Piper Mock had 30 assists for the Cyclones. Uh, so this TCU team was a team they were supposed to beat, and they went out and swept them. Good bounce back win after two losses in a row. Uh, what were you guys' thoughts on uh, Iowa State's performance? It was nice to see a bounce back after the recent struggles. 
Um, they did get out a little slow against TCU, uh, but they were able to, to remain calm. They got, they got down 16 to 20, and, and they were about to lose that first set, uh, but then came back out, you know, took the lead 22 to 21, and finished out that, that first set, which I think was crucial. Uh, right. And they were able to put, just squeak out those first two sets, and that really you know, rocketed them forward through the rest of the game. Right, we talked about that, uh, how those last two losses, they had just hadn't been able to finish out those first one or two sets, yep. and that, that was a big momentum boost for a young team, and they did that in this game, and it resulted in a sweep. John, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, I, I thought their uh, offensive attack was really good compared to the last you know, couple games that they had had before then. It was nice to see them hit at a high percentage, um, you know, Point two eight seven, I think it is. Yep. So, um, yeah, it was really nice to see their offense kind of come together after playing a couple of tough teams. So, <laughs> Yeah, outshot Can or, uh, TCU by a, almost a point eight clip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so really a good bounce back win for Iowa State. And then, of course, they had to go on the road after being at Hilton for three games to play the Sooners. And Oklahoma is always a tough team. I think uh, they were a little better than Iowa State going in. Yeah. And the Cyclones did lose that match 3-1 to one to Oklahoma. Eleanor Holthouse led the team. She kind of had a poor game against TCU, but she bounced back with 14 kills and 17 digs. Uh, so what did you guys see out of Iowa State in this one? A young team on the road. Is there anything that stood out to you that kind of cost them this game? Uh, for me, I would say the errors. Um, 26 errors against Oklahoma. And that's kind of been a trend this year of they're getting around that 20 error mark uh, in the losses and then they're getting about only 10 in the wins. Uh, and it's pretty consistent across the board, especially conference, conference play that, you know, those, especially like on the serves and the, the receives on the serves, it's just those small little errors that, that add up over time and, and I feel like ends up deciding the game. Yeah, you could almost take a play, or uh, the words out of Matt Campbell's mouth, it's that attention to detail yeah. uh, for the volleyball team. If they can turn that around, uh, we can see a lot closer matches for them and of course, Oklahoma outscored Iowa State 70 to 53 in uh, this match. Just uh, all around, seemed like a lackluster performance. John, what do you think? <clears throat> yeah, just kind of defensively, I thought they were a little lacking. Um, Oklahoma's shot percentage was .235, which is higher than what Iowa State's average is. I think it hangs around 200. So, um, you know, that wasn't very good to see, considering that Oklahoma, don't get me wrong, they're a very good team, but they're not elite such as Baylor and Texas so to see Iowa State allowing that to an Oklahoma team is just kind of underwhelming a little bit so I would have liked to see that a little higher. And I talked about this after the Texas Tech game. Texas Tech had the uh, eight aces I believe it was against mm -hmm. Iowa State. That was mm -hmm. a three to one match and now Oklahoma had ten aces in this one so really just kind of easy points that Iowa State's giving up. I think it was more concerning than the loss was the way they lost. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't quite as close as I thought it would be some of those sets kind of got away from them. I'd uh, only getting 12 points to 15 points. Like when you're when you're that far behind, it's really hard to mm -hmm. to be in the set and and win at the end of the set without being within like an arm's reach or just they were just too far too far behind. Yeah, I think that's that's a good point because especially I wouldn't say that I expected Iowa State to win that game, win that match against uh, Oklahoma, but I definitely expected them to compete better than they did. So I think that was a good point to make, Jared. So are you guys chalking this lack of consistency if, for them up to youth, or is there something else that they can change? It might be youth. I'm not, not really sold on that, but it's definitely a possibility. Um, I mean, they've played together enough now, mm -hmm. and, and they're at this level, uh, and so they're just, something's not clicking quite right with the, with the team right now, and it could be any number of things. I still think they're kind of feeling the um, injuries from Mock and others, um, still trying to you know get everybody back together and mesh well. And especially when you got to do that with the Big 12's uh, grueling schedule, it's really hard. But you know, I just I just think they really haven't played as much as maybe they sh have wanted going into this part of their schedule. So, so they're still sitting at 12 and seven overall in the season and three and four in Big 12 play. So definitely still fighting to be in the middle of the pack in this tough mm -hmm. volleyball Big 12 conference. Uh, they return home. They're going to play Kansas State in Hilton Saturday night for their homecoming game. Do you guys think they pull this one out? I do. I like the Cyclones to bounce back here at home. Uh, just clean up, clean up the performance just a little bit and uh, reduce those errors, and, and they'll be just fine. Yeah, Kansas State's kind of towards the bottom of the conference, so I 
think that Iowa State should handle them just fine and kind of hopefully propel them towards an, a berth in the postseason? Well, definitely go out to Hilton Coliseum and watch this Iowa State volleyball team. And uh, actually go to the football game, and watch Iowa State play Oklahoma State, hopefully win. You can mm -hmm. use that ticket stub to get into the volleyball game for free. Go support those volleyball girls as they fight in this tough Big 12 conference. Support all your Iowa State athletics because it's homecoming week, guys. It's going to be a great week. Lots of fun events going on. Anything you wanted to add? Go Cyclones, as always. Go Cyclones. Right. Thanks for watching Cyclone Insiders.